imagine a criminal investigation hanging over you for two years, five years, or a decade. Your life is on hold. Marriage, children, career, travel, your health, all suffer unless you've got the mindset of a champ to overcome it. It's hard. The waiting and wondering, as Tom Petty said, waiting is the hardest part. It's true, certainly harder than any day in federal prison. I was thrilled when I got sentenced to 18 months in federal prison, ecstatic because at least I had clarity because I felt like I had been in jail for so long and I eventually surrendered to federal prison April 28, 2008, three years to the day that the FBI showed up at my home, three and a half years from when I lost my job at UBS and I walked into this world of federal prison. And I'm frequently asked what happens in federal prison? Well, it depends on the prisoner. In my case, I was unprepared. I was naive. I ignored people who tried to help prepare me for this experience. I went in um, looking for trouble because I didn't know how to respond or prepare in this environment. And I began to make bad decisions early, like uh, associating with the wrong people, using my time poorly, exercising all day, complaining, blaming others for my plight in life. And it was in a few, within a few months of my time in federal prison that I realized the hardest part would be coming home with a sullied reputation. And what really happens in prison for most prisoners is nothing. It's, it's a little time away. For some people, they use it like as a fat farm, big boy time out, get in some better shape, read some books, watch a little TV. Most guys are bored all day. That's what happens in federal prison. And after a few months, I realized without real preparations, this would amount to a life sentence because I saw guys scared to go home. Imagine an accountant serving 30 years for mail fraud or bribery as a politician, scared to go home. It's harder for some of the white collar guys if you've made big money and you've lost your licenses and your reputation's destroyed, what are you going to do? How are you going to rebuild? I saw some people turning down the halfway house, which gets you out of prison sooner, choosing to stay in prison longer because they weren't ready to go home. And then I recalibrated. I began to work around 4 a.m., wake at 4 a.m. every single day. I go to the quiet room next to my now business partner, Michael Santos, and write and think and better understand how the hell I ended up inside of a federal prison despite all the privilege and opportunity I have in life. Documenting my journey through a blog and then handwriting with Michael my first book, Lessons from Prison, chronicling how a good person raised with values and virtues can fall astray. Waking at four, going to the quiet room to work, to the chow hall at 6.30, back upstairs, running eight to 10 miles every day, do my job in the kitchen from 12 to two, go back to the quiet room to work from two to six, no TV, no boredom, no complaining, no hustling, working all day to prepare for the hardest part, coming home. Work till six, dinner in the chow hall, do my second shift in the kitchen from six to seven, in bed every night at eight o'clock like a 95 year old man. Up at four, in bed at eight, every day for the 18 months. That's what happens in federal prison, at least for me. And it's the reason the experience was so productive. I used it as a sabbatical to prepare for the life I wanted to live but it all started with understanding how I became corrupted and how I did not have a value system and how I said one thing and did another and how I could easily be bought for the right number. And I learned these lessons from the inside of a federal prison after creating victims, devastating my family, ruining my reputation, losing my freedom, and losing every penny I had earned legally or illegally. And it's a lesson I don't want any of you to learn because it will be harder on those that love and support you. It will be devastating for your parents. It was devastating for my parents, especially with what I put them through, how hard I worked. So as I wrap up, before I turn it over to questions, I will say this. What happened to me in federal prison was an opportunity to recalibrate, to think and understand the, the decisions I made. And I'm, I'm frankly grateful for that opportunity because I didn't get it. I needed to be in federal prison to fully understand it. I didn't get it till I went there, standing for count, serving time with white supremacists, seeing some occasional violence, dealing with indifferent staff, living amongst some inveterate criminals. I got it. And I'm grateful to have this opportunity to educate others on the consequences that follow bad decisions, to help you understand that none of you will graduate USC with the intention to commit fraud or do harm. Very few people do that. I mean, who in their right mind says, yeah, today's the day I'm gonna, you know, break the law and create victims and throw my life down the toilet. 
Yeah, 10.33 on uh, Friday, February 12th. That sounds like a good day to start. It doesn't work that way. It's subtle, it's pernicious, it happens. And without a value system in place, you don't even know you're going wrong. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to, to speak. I'm happy to respond with any questions. Lastly, I am occasionally asked about books that I suggest for students. I have a wonderful reading list that I encourage you to read. So if anyone wants to email me or reach out about suggested books I have as you embark on your professional careers, I'm happy to share them. And the majority of them are books that I read from, uh, from prison and I continue to read to this day. So thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak. And if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them.